So chances are you've stumbled across this video because you've been YouTubing and trying to find tips on stick welding thin steel tube. I know I did and I got nowhere. Um, so I practiced and got to a point where I think I can share my knowledge. Um, of course the golden rule of welding is always criticize someone else's welding and I'd be disappointed if I didn't have any uh, comments as such underneath. But this is square hollow section it is 1.6 millimeters thick or oh, I don't know in inches it it's thin it's proper thin and um, all I've got is this $80 off the quokka kind of 150 year old buzz box AC welder and some electrodes that I bought from Bunnings a long time ago um, normally when you weld thin steel tube with a stick welder you blow holes everywhere um, so the technique I'm going to show you is basically a stop start technique where you know you're welding your two bits of steel you kind of go for a bit and then you lift up wait a second or two put it back down again keep going lift up wait a second or two and uh, and that allows the steel enough time to cool so it doesn't blow giant holes So hopefully you've uh, got yourself a cutoff wheel and you can cut stuff at approximately 90 degrees. Um, something I've always struggled with. But uh, I've got this in the vise, but ordinarily you're welding down on the floor and it's just difficult. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, hook my clamp up and, and tack this in place. And then once I've tacked it, I'll sort of set the video up and you can kind of see what I'm doing with the stop start technique. Okay, so that's tacked in place. Um, I've got a really short electrode now, but there should be enough to at least run one bead. Um, sometimes if you're like me and you struggle with the really long electrodes, it's a bit like turning a light switch off with a broom handle. Um, you can cut them in half, you know, make it easy on yourself. So I'm going to start by um, welding down here and um, hopefully you'll get the gist of my technique. pretty much the uh, rod done. But we'll let that cool. And if this will focus, which I uh, doubt it will, but you can kind of see how that slag's formed uh, some, I don't know about stacks of dimes, maybe fish scales, if you use your imagination. But uh, we'll chip it off and see how it looks. Some people say that you shouldn't have to chip it that hard, but whatever. Yeah, <clears throat> bit of an inclusion at the front where I kind of muffed the start of my weld, but um, the rest of it's actually pretty strong. So we'll um, do the other side and then um, run down the edges and we'll make a solid weld. So you'll notice, I think it's really important to get the tip nice and hot before you start doing a pass. And um, that just makes your start so much easier. that cools and focuses. Um, same kind of situation as before and um, just chip that off and see how it looks. So 
yeah, you can see I had another difficult start there. The odd little inclusion, but um, I can leave that out with a screwdriver if you're real fussy and then go over it again. And look, it's plenty strong. I'll be using it to build a chook pen or something like that. And that's what most of us are here to learn about. So that was after a second pass. I just tidied it up a bit. Um, got a better start and... Um, yeah, looks like more fish scales, but not too bad. I um, went over the other side as well, and I still managed to get an inclusion for some strange reason. But um, uh, I just do up these ends, and we'll have a fairly solid world. Now with this world, um, we're going to go up against the edge of the steel and um, this is a bit thicker so you can put a bit more heat into it so when you run through here just kind of bias the amount of time you spend on this piece of metal and kind of just like dab across when you need to uh, to get onto this side because that'll blow away too easily otherwise um, so I'll set up and um, let's watch another pass okay so again we'll warm the tip up and then work our way across So that's uh, another, hopefully, set of fish scales when it cools. A stack of dimes can come later. <laughs> And that's a fairly typical looking weld on that sort of kind of a join of two bits of metal. Um, yeah, the old little bit of a crater where you stop and start, but um, it's consistent, it's straight, and it's strong. And I'll do the last side, um, exactly the same situation as the previous side. But uh, this time, just the way I've put it in the vise, it means that I don't have a huge amount of room to sort of get around the clamp. Um, I can kind of go over the top, but it just kind of goes to show how forgiving you can get with the uh, angle of the electrode. Um, as long as the two bits melt and they don't include bits of slag in your weld, it's working. some hollow crackling there so I suspect I might have a bit of a hole wait and see It's not too bad. It look pretty, but um, as I said, you could always grind it or you could always go over with a second weld and make it look nice, but that's good enough for me. So um, thanks for watching and um, criticism of my welding is not only expected, it's encouraged. Cheers.